Hello everyone, my name is Jesse and welcome back to another Bakugan video. Today I have a pretty exciting one for you guys. We're going to be taking a look at some Baku tech, specifically one individual here. If you saw my previous video, I kind of teased that I'd be getting this Bakugan, but today we are going to be doing kind of an in-depth review on it. There's actually not a whole lot to say about him, um, which is weird because the wiki has nothing. It's, it's interesting. I don't know. Uh, maybe do some investigating on that later, but today we are reviewing Bakutech made last boss um, So as you can see here, he is a Pyrus Bakugan. He's also a 36 millimeter. So if you take a look here um, This is a B2 Darkest Percival. So he is slightly bigger than the regular 32 millimeter uh, Bakugan so just one of the gimmicks of Bakuzek here, um, some of them are quite larger, sort of like Barry Beyond. I did a review on that one, of course, a couple months ago. Made Last Boss has a cool gimmick here, and we'll get into that in a second. But I want to take a look at the color scheme here, because I like this Bakugan for a few very specific reasons. And then I've also got a, a cool announcement I'm going to make on it as well. The gold on red on black is a really nice color choice, and just the designs on them are really awesome. I mean, you got all this on the, especially on the gold here, you've got all these different kind of symbols and patterns, which look really nice. And I mean, even like the front here, you've got this, it's a nice gold. It's really cool. It doesn't show up quite as good on camera, but it is really nice. Um, I am a big fan of it. Even like this, like it's, it's not exactly symmetrical, but it looks good. So... Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with the whole overall design of this thing. And when we pop it open, I'll, I'll show you what it reminds me of because it's actually kind of funny. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and pop him open. So I'm going to be using this card here. It's a, a catch-up card, just one of the ones I had. And let's go ahead and pop him open. All right. So as you can see, here is made last boss. And he's got a couple manual parts. Of course, he's got these horns right here. And then he's got these two little silver feet that actually you pop open like this. And bam. Cool. As you can see there, 720 G's, not too shabby. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more space to talk about him. Uh, there we go. And so the reason I really like this Bakugan, the reason that it like got me interested in him, is because he looks like... It, this is going to sound really vague for maybe majority of you, but if you've ever played the game Viva Pinata, this Bakugan looks like it reminds me a lot of Dragonosh from that game. It was one of the rarest Pinata you could get, and if you don't know what Viva Pinata is, you're basically like sort of like a farmer, like you you have a garden that attracts Pinata and you can like tame them. And Dragonosh was one of the harder ones to get, but he the whole like figure like he looks a lot like Dragonosh to me. And I saw him and I was like, dang, that reminds me of some of my childhood. So I got like a double nostalgia. I got like the Bakugan nostalgia and then the Viva Pinata nostalgia. And I don't know, I thought it was really funny. Um, and so, yeah, Made Last Boss here. I'm going to read some wiki information because he's actually kind of interesting. So his name, Made Last Boss, is actually essentially what it translates to is Gloomy Death or like Gloomy Dead, which is pretty interesting for a Bakugan. I think just knowing that like his name means the gloomy dead is pretty cool um, and kind of intimidating when you go into battle. So I'm a little confused here on the wiki. The wiki really has done me wrong. Um, so the wiki says that it is the final new Bakugan from Bakutech series released by Sega Toys. That is the second line in the trivia. Okay, and when I first read that, it made me think this was the last Bakugan made because Sega Toys made Bakutech. Bakutech was the last line, last line of Bakugan released, right? Um, apparently, that's not the case because this this sentence is very misleading because the final Bakugan ever released is actually one of the armored Bakugan. I did a review of these a while back too, but it's actually uh, Yasha Tagaris. And he is the last known release for the entire Bakugan franchise, because the armors were the last released. So that makes me sit there and think, who who made the Baku armor like the Bakugan armors? Because if it wasn't Sega and it wasn't Spin Master, then who was it? So I don't know. If you guys have any clarification on that in the comments, just let me know. Because I I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. It says he's the last one made by Sega. 
So then if it wasn't Spin Master, because Spin Master didn't make Bakutech, and it wasn't Sega, then who 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 is that that third company that made Bakugan? So I don't know. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at Made Last Boss's like key feature here. So if you take a look here, um, he has this ring that closes and everything, and then he also has this piece here. So this rotates. Um, it rotates at you know in any angle you want. You can close it essentially, and you can have this little metal piece be like your director. So I, I can't close him fully right now, but essentially you can have this piece of his body rotate. And so you can use that to direct your spins and how you roll the Bakugan um, based on this heavy metal. It's not quite very heavy. It actually feels like a plastic. But this helps. Well, this is supposed to help guide the Bakugan when you roll it. So you can essentially have him has, have his tail any way you want. Like if you think you can roll him straight and hit on this, you can do it that way. If you think you can somehow manage to do it this way, go for it. I don't know if you can, but... Um, I mean, it's worth a shot. He definitely looks different now that we have him like this, right? Um, but, yeah, essentially you can have him, you know, you can roll him anyway. And I'll, I'll definitely do some test rolls just to see if we can get the uh, difference here. But before that, I want to make an announcement. So, uh, exciting thing about Made Last Boss is I am actually, I collected him for the sole reason that I want to start a deck around him. So, one of the cool trivia things on... Made Last Boss is this. I'll read it exactly off the thing. Made Last Boss is one of the four Bakugan shown to have possessed a brawler, the other three being Gift Jinryu, Seis Tavano, and Drathon. So that got me thinking that I could make a deck called the Possessed Deck, and I think that'd be super sick. So it'd be a deck consisting of Made Last Boss, Seis Tavano, and Gift Jinryu. And that would be my deck, and I'd build around it and call it the Possessed Deck, which I think is a sick name. So... Hopefully there'll be a video on that soon. I'm still working on getting a gift gen review. Um, so I'll make a video once I have everything and we can go and talk about, you know, specific cards and stuff that may work for the deck. But I think that's a cool name and it's a cool idea. Just having three Baku tech that have possessed brawlers before and call it the possessed deck. I think that's super sick. And so, I don't know, I'm excited about it. I think it'll be fun. This guy costed me exactly $205. The seller sold it to me for $200. And then I got it shipped for five. I mean, this this broke the record for the most I've ever spent on a Bakugan. The most I'd ever spent on a Bakugan was my translucent single-headed Hydronoid. I spent like $161.50 from a bid. This broke that for a single Bakugan. I spent $200. I feel like it's I have to talk about it because that's like... For a lot of people, that's like normal. But like for me, it's like I I pride myself on getting the best deals and stuff like that. And so when it comes to Bakutech, things have definitely gone up and they're much rarer. And so I'm not uh, I'm not super upset about spending 200 on this because a lot of them are going closer to 300 online. And plus, of course, as time goes on, uh, the Bakugan get more sought after and the prices go up. But it is. I don't know for two hundred dollars like he doesn't he doesn't feel worth two hundred dollars let's be clear uh he might be rare enough to be like oh yeah he's he's harder to find so he's worth 200 but like in terms of like the background itself and the quality and all that he doesn't feel anywhere near worth two hundred dollars to me um which you know it is what it is and i paid the price because i wanted him really bad and i was cool with it like i'm not against the the price i got it's just that i think personally this background most Bakugan should never be worth over $200 in general. Um, unless they are like a trophy Bakugan one from like a tournament or something. I don't see many Bakugan being worth the $200. A lot of people are asking for a bunch of things. Like even some of the mutant Bakugan being worth like $150 to $200. I just don't see that being worth it. Um, and so even when it comes to this guy, like I did pay the $200. I was okay with the price because it was much lower than market price, but just in general, I don't think these Bakutech are worth that much money. With that being said, he's here and he's really awesome and I really love him. Uh, he is super cool and his gimmicks are really awesome. So let's go ahead and get into spinning him. Uh, so I'll show you how to close him really quick because I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I'm close. So feet go in and then these horns go down. This horn is actually like Delta and so it has like a spring so it doesn't close. And then, so what I've gathered is you close the, the front first. So the hands, then the head, and then the, uh, it looks like you close these. And 
I don't know, that may not be right because it seems like he's kind of trying to, you gotta like push pieces down and then you close the gold pieces. So the ring here, so the ring locks in. You hear that nasty click. I hope that's okay. Um, and then this is the part, so you got this part of the ball closed. The next part is this. And so we're gonna roll it on the top first. And so this piece goes down and then that. And so let's see if I can get this is going to be difficult. Let me... So we're going to roll him. I'm going to roll him head first. Now remember that metal piece is up on top. We're going to do about two cards away. That's usually default. And... Got to get a good angle here. I'm, I'm in a really weird position. My rolling may not be spot on. Ah, close enough. So as you can see though, that rolled really straight. So let's try to get... Try to do it again. Yeah, okay. So, that, I mean, that rolled relatively straight, right? So let's experiment and see how things look um, if we do it differently. So let's take this piece, oops, gotta focus, and let's do it at like a really strange angle, like here, okay? All right, let's get everything closed. Head first again, we'll do about two card spaces away, and well, we're just gonna roll them straight and see how that affects it. Okay, not too much. Not too much. There we go. You see that curve? It was kind of hard to tell because it went off screen. But there is a drastic curve uh, to my left side. So it looks like the metal's on the right side of his body curved right to the left. So let's try again. Okay. It was curving. I'll have to get like a... Let me see if I can get a top-down view of this for you guys. One second. All right. So I'm going to actually take... So his head's here. Right. Head there. I'm actually going to do it and do it completely to the um, so the metal piece here is on my right side and we're gonna see how this affects the rolling i'm trying to give you guys a better angle let's get everything locked in okay all right and so i'm gonna be rolling from i'm gonna do it like right here i think yeah maybe a little bit farther and let's see just i just want to experiment see how this affects Okay, well that was pretty straight. Let's actually remove the card and see where he goes. So we're just gonna do some casual rolling. I'm just gonna roll him off screen and then it'll probably pop in a screen, so. So it seems like he's trying to curve. And it might be really subtle, but yeah, he is definitely like, I'm flicking him straight and he is rolling the other way. And so what's great about this in a battle is you can, so it's of course, the metal's here, so of course it's gonna follow wherever that metal goes. So let's put the card here. All right, let's try this. I'm putting the card here, way in the back. I'll center it for you guys. Let's see if I can, all right. And then I'm gonna roll this back a gun from like here. So he's like, if my finger's here, he's off screen. So actually I'll, I'll see if I can get him on screen. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna try and roll him like straight. Like I'm gonna flick him this way and see if we can land him on this card close okay this can work it'll take some practice but we can do this let's do a really light flick oh my gosh <laughs> okay one more time we can do this come on come on oh yes see that's what i love so much about made last boss that was really cool and so What's nice is you can use this this piece to manipulate the way he rolls. And like obviously the easiest way is to just do that because he's gonna roll straight. But if you wanna flex on some people, that is definitely the way to do it. Yeah, really cool back we gone. And just, I think that's so cool for a deck piece. Like that is awesome, you know? Oh, that was really fun. Okay, that'll be fun to experiment later, especially when we build the deck around him. So we'll we'll stay uh, just stay tuned for that, and we'll see uh, we'll see when that happens. Again, I'm still looking for a gift, Jinryu. It might take a while, but the plan is there, and I'm excited for it. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on Made Last Boss. If there's any like trivia or information you can give to me about him, I would really appreciate that because the wiki says nothing. Um, it has like almost no information except for some light trivia. Uh, so I would appreciate any information you guys have on this dude. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.